Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Jordan McConnell, uh, host of uh, Crohn's Veteran. Uh, I'm joined by my co-hosts, uh, CJ Cabrera and Renika Wood. Uh, thank, you, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, today, we have a very special guest um, that I'm very grateful to have here. Uh, this man is a CEO of Sports One Marketing. Uh, he is a uh, Forbes um, magazine um, motivational speaker. He's a he's a host of he's a host of a entrepreneurs uh, the playbook podcast. He's a, he's a man on a mission to make a billion people happy. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, uh, David Meltzer. How are you doing today, sir? I'm amazing, man. Thank you for this opportunity. Really looking forward to talking with you guys. Awesome. Well, um, we we are happy to have you here, and um, I will get uh, you know things uh, started off with uh, my my first question for you. Um, and so you know you're. Uh, your uh, values are, you know, are gratitude, you know, uh, empathy, uh, effective communication, and accountability. And so, I would like for you to explain, you know, explain the, you know, what those values mean to you, and how folks with, you know, IBD and Crohn's disease can uh, utilize those values to, you know, to live better lives. Yeah. Well, let's start with gratitude. So, you know, regardless of what our challenges are, whether it's Crohn's or some other uh, physical disability or challenge that we have or mental, emotional, financial disability, gratitude is the most important thing because gratitude gives us perspective. Gratitude allows us to find the light, the love and the lesson in what is happening. And you three are living proof of that with how you're addressing Crohn's and utilizing it as an opportunity in order to grow. There's one lesson that I've learned in life and that that lesson is there's suck in everything. You know, there's something that just sucks about no matter what job, no matter what happens in your life, no matter the big house or the big car or the new relationship, there's at least a little bit of suck. And so gratitude allows you to find that light, love and lesson to search and seek the superpower of every situation. The second one, as you suggested, is empathy or forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is a means. And when I say that, what I uh, am trying to explain to people is forgiveness is a means to unwind the perceptions that are not aligned with what we want, what I call untruths, mm -hmm. right? So I use forgiveness to unwind the untruths in my relationships, in my circumstance. I use forgiveness to unwind the means to unwind the, the untruths about myself. Uh, and I utilize forgiveness in that manner. It gives me peace. It's the practice of quieting everything in my life to a peaceful state. The third one is so powerful. Most people today, especially, or people that suffer from Crohn's, they feel so much uncertainty. They feel so out of control. And so what accountability does, it is allows you to have complete control of your life, of your disease, of your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial well-being. Accountability is very simple in my mind. It's two questions. What did I do to attract this to my life? And what am I supposed to learn from it? What did I do to attract it to my life? What am I supposed to learn from it? Everything, pain itself is just an indicator. It's a turn signal. It's telling you, hey buddy, move into a different direction, to a better place, a better situation, or I can make your situation better if you change your ways. And accountability allows me to do that because pain is an indicator of mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial pain that I have a lesson to learn. Accountability allows me to not only learn the lesson, but to be in control of learning that lesson. And then finally, you talked about effective communication. Right. Effective communication is uh, the practice of inspiration. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is there's effective communication. Most people see, I need to communicate effectively with everything I'm connected to, meaning people, places, and things. I need to motivate, convert, and inspire other people. But what they're forgetting is effective communication far reaches beyond just what we're connected to. It's what we're connected from. And so effective communication to me is the reminder that I am always connected to the greatest source of love, light, and lessons, the greatest source of power that ever existed. And my responsibility and accountability is to allow it to come through me with appreciation, with gratitude, and the ability to add my own personal superpowers or values to it and give it away to everything that I'm connected to. I don't give so I can receive. I actually, through effective communication, receive so I can give. That's awesome, David. You know, thank you for you know breaking that down and explaining that to everybody. Um, you know, uh, uh, CJ. You know, I think you had a 
So, you know, a, a couple of questions too. What's on your mind? Yes, I had a, my first question for you, David, is that how do you how do you stay motivated and on track while fighting pain and being like medicated? Because that's one of my biggest downfalls for me is that I wake up in the morning with a bunch of pain, and the first thing I go to is cannabis because <laughs> it's instant relief for me, and then. Uh, I used the uh, indica strain, which is like mostly a body high. And when you smoke that, it just like takes out the motivation away from you, you know? Yeah. So num number one, we need to decipher the three steps of inspiration. What's causing that interference or corrosion to that great source of power, light, love, lessons, health, wealth, well-being. And the first is motivation. You have a procedure to motivate yourself, meaning to get up, to get back up or get started or to get restarted. Where your system and procedure has to change is in the conversion from the motivation, which motivation is a short-term solution as you're finding out, converting into inspiration, which is the longevity of the enjoyment of the consistent everyday persistent pursuit of that potential. So what I would do is, you know, utilizing whatever substance it is in order to help reduce and relieve the pain, but find another mechanism, right? Breathing, meditation. There's a variety of, of different things that yoga, there's a different things that you could utilize that don't create that interference that you're explaining that uh, you know, take away from the inspiration. Because look, sounds like you get up and you get back up. You get started and you get restarted, but you're having difficulty converting that into an inspired well-being. And so what we have to do is test things see what's right for you, variety of mechanisms, be more interested than interesting, maybe find some more mentors that have alternative solutions that you have dealt with, especially in sports. A lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people have Crohn's, et cetera, but a lot of people suffer some of the same ailments of fatigue and exhaustion and, you know, me mental fatigue and exhaustion as well, and be able to use different mechanisms to convert and to become inspired. Thank you, David, for sharing. <laughs> um, sure. My second question for you is, do you know anybody in the cannabis industry who has IBD? And could you possibly connect him to me? You know, I know people in the cannabis industry at a very high level that would know people that have uh, Crohn's, et cetera. So I would be more than happy to introduce you uh, to some of the largest funds that are dealing with the multiple of companies. Specifically, I'm sure there's some that are dealing specifically with this issue. So I'd love to make that introduction to those hubs so that, you know, as a sponsor, I know someone that knows someone. Does that sound fair? Yes, thank you, David. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Renika so she can speak. <laughs> I'm smiling with CJ. <laughs> Good, good afternoon. Um, I guess my question is, um, I am a person that has Crohn's disease, and I also am a licensed addiction therapist as well. So I'm on both ends of the spectrum. However, my biggest challenge is trying to fulfill all of my desires and my passions without just focusing on one, because all of them are equally important to me. How do you, how can I keep the motivation of pursuing and, and mastering, fulfilling all of these different parts of my life? Because it's not just me. I have other things I like to do, but now I feel like I'd be um, torn between going this way and that way. And one part of my life tends to suffocate sometimes. So how do you yeah. keep the motivation? So there's five steps that I take in order to do that. The first is every day, take inventory of your own values. Right. So that's going to help give you that clarity, balance and focus that you need your personal values for the day, your experiential values for the day, your giving values for the day and your receiving values for the day. And you don't have to balance all those values. It doesn't have to be 25, 25, 25, 25 percent. It can be weighted heavily towards one of those things per day. You may want to have a day where you just want to help other people. You may want to have a day where you just want to be helped. You may have a day where you want to experience something and take the attention and intention. So the first thing is every single day, take inventory of your own values. Don't be afraid of being a hypocrite and changing your mind and growing and accelerating. Be your authentic self. Illuminate the fact that you're learning, that you don't know what you don't know, and you may find something better tomorrow and change your values. That's fine. The second thing I want you to do is, you know, what CJ did. I call it ask and attract, right? 
Ask people how you could be of service or of value, just like you three are asking others, how can you be of service or of value if you have this disease? But two, ask, do you know anyone that can help me? You know, hey, Jordan, you know anyone that can help me? CJ, Renika, do you guys know anyone that can help me? I'm looking to empower over a billion people to be happy. If you guys could help teach them gratitude, empathy, accountability, effective communication, being and taking inventory of your values and asking. The third thing beyond asking is what I call being a student of my calendar. Uh, I have a, a luck math, uh, it's luck math, it's an equation of luck. And if you look at all the people that you may see that you're like, oh, they're so lucky, I'll tell you what the luck math is, it's an equation. What you pay attention to and what you give your intention to, what you think, say, do, believe, and even your quantum nature, your health, your characteristics, your uh, personality traits, obsessions and addictions, you take all that, aggregate it, thinking, saying, do, and believe it in your quantum memory into your attention, coincidences will occur. The coincidences you want. People will start saying you're lucky. So attention plus intention equal the coincidences you want. So study your calendar. If you study your calendar with that philosophy in mind, with a lens of productivity, how much value am I providing to others, a lens of accessibility, how accessible am I to others, and how am I accessing what I want? And of course, that lens of gratitude that we talked about earlier, finding the light, the love, and the lessons, and everything we have planned, everything we don't have planned, and sleep, you know, making sure we have an unwinding routine. The fourth thing I want you to do uh, when you feel chaotic and with so many balls in the air and so many intentions in the air, I have a philosophy called do it now. The difference between hyper actualizing people and those others are people that actualize what they want. They get stuff done. A hundred percent of the things that you get done now get done. Uh, can't have any better statistic than that. So ask yourself, can I do it now? If you could do it now, do it. If not, put it in your calendar for tomorrow. Prioritize it by what's most important to you according to your values of that day and get it done tomorrow. Then finally, most importantly, this is for everybody out there, practice ending fear. You know, fear, there's a four-step process to practicing ending fear. First is identify what you're afraid of, what ego-based consciousness. For me, you know, varies from the need to be right to the need to be offended, the need to be separate, the need to be inferior and superior, the need to be angry, upset, anxious, worried, frustrated, resentful, guilty, all of these needs of the ego, I practice identifying when I'm feeling that way. The second step is to stop, which is what I call the ferocious part of being a Buddha. Ferocious Buddhas stop when they're accelerating in the wrong direction, when they're moving into ego-based consciousness. They're not making things worse by creating void shortages and obstacles, interference to what they want. And then drop, be a Buddha, breathe. Ask yourself, why am I so afraid of that? Why am I so angry, worried, resentful, offended, separate, inferior, superior, whatever it may be, why? And breathe. And then when we get to neutral, now we roll the last step in the right trajectory. We then align with our values, personal, experiential, giving and receiving values. We align with those and move in the right direction. And if you do those five things, take inventory of your values, not afraid of being a hypocrite, ask and attract how you can be of service and if any other buddy else can help you. Be a student in your calendar with the lens of productivity, accessibility and gratitude, attention plus intention equals the coincidences you want. It's the luck math. Four, do it now, 100% of the things you do now get done. And five, practice ending fear by identifying and then being a ferocious Buddha by stop, drop, and roll. I promise you everything that you want will come to you rapidly and accurately. Wow. Them guys. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> thank well, you. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for all that, David. Um, you know, I have a uh, I have a couple of questions myself. You know, and yeah. so, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, one of them, you know, I guess, is a uh, more more focused on this. You know, Chrome's better in itself. You know, this this uh this business that, you know, I'm you know building. You know, to try to you know, you know, in a similar vein to, uh, sports one marketing. You know, the, the helping people having fun. You know, making money, all these things, and so, um, you know, in, in that vein, uh, do you know anybody, you know, in your professional or personal life, you know, with you know IBD, you know, that uh, you know that would be willing to you know come on our show and share their story? You know, you don't necessarily answer that now, but you know, but, but um, you know, but uh, you know, just you know, but that would mean that would mean a lot to me. You know, it mean a lot to my you know co-hosts here to you know because the idea is to you know build this into you know a global movement. You know, touch people. All over the world with IBD and you know and uh, you know and this kind of relationship capital thing you know to be you know be able to 
you know, you know, like leverage relationships, you know, to meet cool people. Um, you know, I would, I would be honored if you could do that for me. And, you know, is that something that you'd be interested in? Absolutely here to be of service. And I know several people that I could get on your show to help educate, enhance and elevate others. Awesome. Awesome. You know, and also, you know, and so, uh, in the, so in speaking and speaking of that, you know, you know, I've you know, of course enjoyed being your ambassador, you know, sharing, you know, sharing your content, you know, um, you know, you've definitely inspired me, you know, not a lot of people know this, but, you know, I've been following David for like the past, you know, six, you know, six eight months or so. And, um, you know, I actually, you know, traveled halfway across the country, you know, just to, just to meet this guy because, you know, um, you know, he, you know, he said that he could help me and, and he has. And so, um, you know, in, in more, in more, in more ways than one. And so, um, so if, you know, if you could return the favor and be an ambassador for us, and like, you know, like you said, you know, uh, you know, uh, show some people about, you know, our mission and stuff, I greatly appreciate it. And, um, but also if, you know, if you could just, you know, that your mission to, you know, empower or make, make a, a billion people happy, if you could explain, explain to our audience, you know, the thinking behind that and what, you know, and how you hope to do it. Absolutely. Well, I not only hope to do it, but it's already done and it's done because there's people like you three and I'm only reverse engineering what I believe to be true meaning I'm connecting the dots backwards from what is already done into reality. And when I say that, all I need to do is find a thousand people like you, like CJ and Jordan and I'm sorry, <laughs> I, Renika. Uh, so all three of you, uh, and if I can get you and teach you these values that we talked about, these tools that were given, this empowering perspective and mindset, health set, heart set, what we think, say, do, and believe. If I can empower just a thousand people in my lifetime that are capable like you three to empower another thousand people, to empower another thousand people, a thousand times a thousand is a million, a million times a thousand is a billion. If I can create a collective consciousness of happiness of over a billion people, that's one eighth of the earth that is happy. Happiness is a wonderful thing. It's spread simply by witnessing it. It strengthens you mentally, physically, emotionally, and it even strengthens your immune system. So I believe happiness can cure Crohn's disease as well. Uh, so happiness is crucial to what I do. It's one of the most powerful things on earth and so viral in nature. It will strengthen you in all types of different ways. So I appreciate all three of you. And of course, I'll promote and enhance and be an ambassador for you because you, you very much. are part of my mission. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you. Thank you. You're very, you're very welcome, David, and uh, and um, you know, good health to you, sir, and have a great rest of your day. Thank May you. May all be happy, healthy, appreciative, and full of love. Thank you so much. Right, thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Right. Have a great bye, day. Bye, David. Bye. -bye. bye.